What's poppin' everybody? It's your boy Ice Cold JT. Back with another video. You read the title: How to build muscle if you're skinny. Now, before I start this video, I just want to point out that I used to be a skinny ass kid. You know, especially in high school. Oh yeah, bro, I was 120 pounds. I was built like a twig. I was literally a walking toothpick. And every day, I would be insecure about my looks. I had no confidence. I did not want to be seen like in public without a shirt, with a tank top, even with a short sleeve shirt. I was still a little sus about it. I'm like, mm, I mean, I don't want people to see my fucking bony ass skeleton arms. And on top of that, I could probably only do like five to maybe seven push-ups in a row. Like really, all I did in high school was just eat cheese pizza and beat my meat in the corner of my room behind my mom's back after school. That's really all I did. And the reason why I'm telling you all this is because yes, progress can be made. I'm not a top tier bodybuilder. I'm not the strongest man alive. I don't look like The Rock. But what I will say is that I have made progress. Don't get it twisted. And I'm proud of the progress I've made. So with that being said, if you're skinny and you feel a little insecure about it, just be proud of the fact that you came onto this video to learn and improve. That's all that really matters, bro, if I'm being humbly honest. So without further ado, the first way to build muscle is to simply get on a caloric surplus. Now, what does that mean? It literally means eating more calories. How can you expect to, you know, get bigger, build some type of muscle, gain some type of weight if you're not eating more? Like, you got to consume more calories. Don't get it twisted. You can work out as much as you want. You can do as many push-ups and many pull-ups and many squats. But if you're not eating, oh, yeah, bro, you're just going to look like a skeleton. I hate to say it, bro, but it is what it is. You're not going to gain anything. You got to fuel your body with the right nutrients, a.k.a. calories. And no, I'm not talking about the junk calories now. Nah, I'm talking about nutritious calories, whole foods, organic foods. Over here, we only eat for gains. We don't eat for simply pleasure because, look, if we're eating for gains, we really get the pleasure of, you know, gaining the muscle and everything like that. Like, we get pleasure from that. So, you know, in a sense, we are eating for pleasure. Now, I'm going to go over what kind of foods you should be eating and what kind of foods you should watch out for later in the video. But as of right now, we need to find out how many calories should you actually consume. How many? Like 2,000, 3,000, 5,000, 28,000? How much? Now, the first thing I advise you guys to do is to find out what is your BMR, aka what is your basal metabolic rate. And if you guys don't know what that is, it's basically the amount of calories you burn in a day. Like this is, you know, to maintain your weight and shit. Like not to burn off, not to, you know, gain weight, not to lose weight. It's basically telling you how many calories do you burn to, you know, to keep the same weight that you have right now. And you may be wondering, how do I calculate my BMR? Like what the fuck are you talking about, bro? I did not pass algebra two. I don't know how to do that. And what you really need to do is just get out your phone, get out a laptop, get out a tablet, get out any electronic device, go on Google, type in, how do I calculate my BMR? And I'm telling you right now, the first website you will see, go there, enter your age, your weight, your height. And I'm telling you right now, bro, they'll calculate it for you. It's that simple. Like, there's no extra stuff. You don't need to do it in your head. Nah, bro, just look it up on Google. It's real simple. Don't get it twisted. And once you have that number, now it's time to add some calories to it. Now, me personally, I'm all about lean bulking. I don't do that dirty bulky shit, bro. I used to do that low-key in college. I don't fuck with it anymore, bro. I'm not a fan of eating cheeseburgers, donuts, and Hershey Kisses to gain weight just to burn it off later. Nah, fuck all that, bro. We're taking the long route. Lean bulking, all right? So what you need to do is add 15 to 25% to that number, aka your BMR. For example, let's say your BMR is 2,000 calories, okay? So you burn 2,000 calories on a daily basis. I bet. Now what? Now you got to add 25% to it, aka 500 calories. So now, instead of you consuming 2,000 calories in a day, nah, bro, you got to consume 2,500 calories. Don't get it twisted. This is what you call a caloric surplus. Now, after that, though, after you have the amount of calories you know you got to consume, I bet. Now, what kind of calories? What do you eat now? I'm going to tell you straight up, bro. Eat whole organic foods. You know, when you go into the store, every time it says organic on there, just know it's probably okay to eat. You know, unless it's some sus ass, you know, brand that you really don't fuck with. They're just trying to put organic to make you buy it or some shit on some stupid marketing strategy. Then it's like, I bet, but I'm going to keep it straight up. Most of the foods you find in the store that are marked as organic, they are pretty much valid. Like, they're good, bro. They won't, like, kill you or anything. Like, nah, bro, they're good. Like, they're most definitely better than eating some type of junk food, some type of fast food shit like Popeye's chicken sandwich, a Travis Scott burger, all that extra stuff. Nah, bro. Those are the type of foods you do not want to eat. There's a reason why it's called fast food. Like, anything that comes that quickly, like, is that fast, you don't want it, bro. We're all about that long-term battle, bro. We're not here for the short-term shit. Like, fuck all that extra stuff, bro. That's how you... Because it's all about that short-term pleasure. Nah, bro. Especially when it comes to working out, you got to play the long-term game. We're all about here to make gains for a year from now, two years from now, three years from now. Not tomorrow. You are not going to see progress tomorrow, bro. You won't. You won't even see progress next week, low-key. Like, it's going to take weeks, months, years... 
It's gonna take a lot of days, bro, of sweat. Don't get it twisted, bro. Don't think that you're gonna see some progress overnight. Nah, bro, don't work like that. You might even look worse tomorrow, who knows? But all I gotta say is to trust the process and keep moving forward just like Aaron Yeager. So look, when it comes to the foods that you gotta watch out for, junk food, fast food, candy, soda, basically any processed, sugary type shit, you gotta watch out for it, bro. You, you got to. No cookies, no donuts, fuck all that extra shit, bro. If you want to see long-term gains, you cannot be eating them, especially on a daily basis. Yes, you know, you might get away with one or two every week or so or some shit. Like, you know, if you eat it in moderation, but if you're just eating them on a daily basis, like, you know, that's your main meal, a bowl of cookies. Shut the fuck up. You're not going to see any gains. That's not how it works, bro. Now, for the foods that you want to eat, I'm going to say look out for high-protein foods. And these include salmon, beans, lentils, nuts, ah! chicken, ground beef, you know, for those that fuck with meat. We also got eggs, you know, if you mess with dairy. And we got tofu. If you're a vegan, man, I humbly respect you. Now, don't get it twisted. I know this may sound like a lot. Like, how the fuck am I going to have time to, you know, cook a tofu, cook a fucking steak, cook a chicken, cook a egg, all that extra stuff, and one day I get my protein intake. Look, this is where ice-cold protein smoothies come into play. You got to get a blender out, put some fruits in there, add some protein powder, and blend it up. That's how you get that extra protein, you know, in case you're lacking it or whatever. And look, I forgot to mention, but the amount of protein you want should be the same amount as your weight. And what do I mean by that? Let's say you weigh 150 pounds. You got to aim for 150 grams of protein every single day. That's how much you got to eat. So if you know you're not a big eater, like you don't eat that much, you don't want to cook that much food, you don't want to chew that much food, well, guess what? You got to drink some protein shakes. Now, I'm not saying go overdose on them because they could fuck up your liver. Just try to drink one or maybe two shakes at most a day. That's what I recommend. That's what I do. So now that you got the protein, now you got to get the veggies. You got to get your greens. You have to. If you don't eat greens, well, guess what? You're going to be shitting blood. You low-key are going to be constipated, and you might even die next week. So make sure to eat a shit ton of greens. Now, some of my favorites include kale, broccoli, spinach, lettuce, arugula, spirulina, where the list goes on. Like, every single day, I'm switching it up. I don't eat the same type of vegetable every single day, bro. Sometimes I get bored of it low-key. Like, it's been a week. I've been eating arugula every day. Let me eat some baby spinach real quick. Let me go ahead and, you know, steam some fucking broccoli and eat it real quick, man. That shit juicy as fuck. Don't get it too wasty. So after adding all the vegetables, now it's time to add a carb source. Now, me personally, I fuck with oatmeal, pasta, brown rice, sweet potatoes, and whole grain bread. I know this sounds like a weird combination, but truth be told, those are literally my top five, man. Shout out to my top five anime as well. Don't get it too wasty. Now, when it comes to carbs, you don't really want to overdose on the carbs because if you do, you low-key might build a gut. Like, you might get fat as fuck down there. Because that's literally what I did, you know, back in early 2020 during quarantine. Just make sure not to go overboard with the carbs. And, you know, if anything, go overboard with the protein. Nah, but you don't want to do that because if you do that, you're just going to get fat as well. So watch out. All right, watch out. As long as you are eating whole foods and you beat that calorie count and that protein count, you should be good on the diet. Now, the next way to build muscle is literally to work out. And when I say workout, I'm not talking about workout once a week or workout once a month. Nah, bro. Every day. Or at least like almost every day type shit. Because if you're not consistent with it, you will not see progress, bro. You won't. Now, I recommend to work out every body part at least once a week. At least, bro. Bare minimum. Because me personally, I do twice a week. And it doesn't necessarily matter what kind of workout routines you do. Like, oh, should I do push-pull legs? Should I do chest, back, arm, shoulder, legs the next day? Should I do upper body, lower body split? Like, what should I do? Full body every other day? I don't know. I'm going to tell you straight up, bro. Do what works for you. I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, this one is the most optimal, best routine for everybody. Nah, bro. Me personally, I'm doing push-pull legs. But did I start with that? Not really, bro. I kind of did a chest, back, arm, shoulder, legs, believe it or not. And looking back on it, that was definitely a bad idea, bro. I only stuck to it for like a month. So, you know what I'm saying? Don't really do that. Stick to a routine that you're actually going to go for for at least three months type shit. And if you're a beginner, like if you actually never held a dumbbell before, you don't even know what a fucking push-up is like you never actually heard about working out you never even tried working out before then i'm gonna have to say bro do full body bro you know start doing some push-ups maybe do some knee push-ups if you need to like if you really don't know how to do one it's all good but do some wall push-ups maybe knee push-ups just learn how to do the movement first because you don't want to mess around and just injure yourself on some ego shit like oh i could do a push-up and you fucking break your back or some shit nah bro calm down real quick stay humble just start getting your body you know used to being active, used to working out, used to tearing up some muscles. So start doing some push-ups, start doing some pull-ups if you can, start doing some squats. And the trick here is to do compound workouts. Now, what did that mean? That means working out multiple body parts at once. For example, if you're doing a push-up, you are actually working out the chest, shoulders, and the triceps at the same time. Don't get it twisted. Same thing with the pull-ups, you're working out the biceps and the back. Now, this is extremely important, especially for those of you that don't have access to the gym. You got to work out at home. You got to do home workouts. And what do home workouts consist of? Your own body, your body weight. 
And most of the body weight movements you do are compound workouts anyways. Push-ups, pull-ups, squats. I already mentioned that earlier. Don't get it twisty. Now, for those that actually have access to the gym, bro, you better be taking advantage of those resources. You better be lifting those weights real heavy. And most importantly, you must apply progressive overload. Now, what does that mean? That basically means you are adding more resistance to your workouts. If you're dumbbell pressing 35 pounds, well, guess what, bro? Make that 45 real quick. It's like probably make it 40 because if you jump that high, you might crack your shoulder or something. So watch out. But basically, make the workouts harder because as you're getting stronger, you must increase the weight. And if you're working at home, you got to increase the reps because, hey, those 100 push-ups a day, it's just getting easy as fuck, bro. Start hitting 150. Start hitting 200. Low-key, start hitting 500 a day. Nah, I'm just joking because if you hit 500 push-ups a day, low-key, like, at that point, mm, you're going to see diminishing returns. You might as well buy a fucking weight vest and hit 100 solid, nice weighted pull-ups than do 500 bodyweight push-ups. At that point, man, you got to work smarter, not harder. Don't get it too wasty. So if you want to see true results, make sure to apply progressive overload. I repeat, man, add the weight. Because if you're getting stronger, you must make it harder for yourself. Like, you got to hit that next level. You got to bench press 225 now. Nah, bro, 185 is not cutting it. Hit the 225 place. Don't get it twisted. And this should also motivate you to, you know, actually want to work out more. Because you're like, ah, shit, it's like a video game. You're like leveling up more. Well, guess what? I'm going to hit, you know, 187 next time. 185, not a shit week. Let me hit 187. You basically leveled up. You know, we all want to see progress. We all get that dopamine rush when we see us making progress. We all do. So why not actually make it fun and, you know, keep leveling up like that? That's another thing, too. If you're not having fun while working out, you might not be actually working out type shit like yes it sucks don't get it twisted like it sucks you know when you're in the moment you don't really like feeling the pain in your chest you don't like feeling the pain in your legs as you're hitting those squats i understand but at the end of the day like if you're not having fun you know seeing the progress or with this whole workout journey as a whole then i don't know bro should you actually be working out that's just a question of my end i don't know like if you don't really enjoy it i don't know what to tell you to be honest you might be working out wrong or some shit if i'm being humbly honest and that's another thing you always got to make sure you have perfect form your form must be immaculate and juicy as shit Cause if not, you could damn near injure yourself. You could pull a muscle. I don't know, bro. You could, uh, you could uh, low key like you gotta watch out. And a good way to tell is if you feel the burn, like you feel the fucking pain in that specific muscle. For example, if I'm hitting a bicep curl, I better be feeling that burn in my biceps. If I'm feeling the burn somewhere else on my shoulder, in my leg, in my meat, then I'm doing it wrong. It's that simple. Like you gotta feel the burn in that very spot. And a good way to help your body do this is to, you know, first of all, do the right form, and second of all, think about that muscle. As you're hitting that lateral raise for the shoulders, bro, think about the shoulder. Think about that shoulder feeling that pain right there. And I can assure you, you will feel the burn on that shoulder. Don't get it twisted, bro. Just really think about the muscle that you're actually working out at that very moment. Now, for those of you that don't have access to the gym, I highly recommend you to buy a fucking pull-up bar. Buy a pull-up bar that you can hang on your door real quick just to do some pull-ups because I can assure you it is a very legendary investment and your back will thank you later. Don't get it twisted. And also because, you know, me personally, pull-ups are my favorite back workout, like, they work out damn near like every part of the back. Like if you actually do them right, I'm telling you, bro. Just and if you don't even want to get a pull-up bar like for the for the door shit, go to a random park, bro. Go to your nearby park. Go on the monkey bars and do some pull-ups there. Like there's no excuse to be honest, bro. If you can't even do that, go hang on the fucking roof of your house or some shit. Like do something. There's always a way, bro. And if you don't even want to do that, okay, bro. Do snow angels on the ground, bro. There is no excuse. I know a lot of people are gonna be like, oh, I can't do pull-ups because I don't have a pull-up bar. Shut the fuck up. Now when it comes to the chest. You guys already know. I highly advise you guys to do push-ups. Now, me personally, I like to change it up, bro. I don't like to do just regular push-ups only. Like, that shit boring as fuck. It's only going to work out one part of my chest anyways. So, you got to switch it up, bro, by doing decline push-ups. You know, this really works out the upper chest. Don't get it fucked up. Then after that, you could do diamond push-ups. Now, these are a little hard. I'm not going to lie. Probably the hardest out of all the push-up variations. But they do work out the triceps. And I don't know about you, but I'm trying to have those big-ass juicy triceps, man. Shout out to the Triceratops. And another push-up variation that I sometimes do is the wide push-ups. Could this work out, you know, the outer chest and shit? Because at the end of the day, you got to work out all parts of the chest. If not, it's low-key going to look weird, bro. It's going to look lopsided. Like, it's not going to look equal, balanced. Fuck all that extra shit. Now it's time for the shoulders. You know, probably the best shoulder workout, to be honest, bro, is the handstand. But me personally, as of right now, I really can't do that if I'm being humbly honest. But you can do pike push-ups. I know my form is not the greatest. It low-key looks like dog doo-doo. But at the end of the day, I really don't do pike push-ups on a daily basis, bro. I mainly do overhead press with these dumbbells. And if you don't got dumbbells at home, bro, it's all good. Just use something. Like, literally use water, gallons, or some shit, bro. You can always be creative and think of something. Don't get it twisted. No excuses no matter what. And since the shoulder has three delts, you got to work out all three. Don't get it twisted, bro. You can't skip a single one. Nah, bro. So, look. The first one, front delts. You know, for the interior delts. Don't get it fucked up. After that, 
you could do lateral raises. Now, these are good for, you know, making the side of your shoulders look bigger because you can't look big if your shoulders are low-key small and shit. Don't get it fucked up. Me, personally, I'm still working on it on a day-to-day -day basis, bro. Like, I used to be scrawny as shit to the point where my shoulders look pointy as shit. Like, low-key as pointy as a nipple on a fucking freezy-ass cold day. So, with that being said, you got to do the lateral raises, man. Always hit the sides, man. Make sure your form low-key looks like a flapping bird. That's how you do it. Like, flapping the wings, man. Shout out to Freedom. And next, you got to work out the real delts. And to do this, you just bend over slightly. Pause the homo. Grab some weights. If you don't have any weights, what I'm telling you, just grab anything that's low-key heavy to the point where it's like at least 10, maybe 15 pounds, depending on, you know, the weight that you need. And then you want to spread out your arms and actually pull them towards the back type shit. Like, look at this video right here, bro. It's really hard to explain. I'm not going to lie. Now, if you want to work out your triceps, I highly recommend you to buy a resistance band because this will not only help you for triceps, but it would also help you for, you know, hitting bicep curls, maybe even working out your shoulders with the lateral raises. Like I'm telling you, bro, there's a lot you can do with a resistance band. Don't get it fucked up. So me personally, I like to take the band, put it against a wall and then take the other, you know, part of the resistance band and pull it down. That way I'm working out my triceps and make sure you always squeeze at the bottom. You always got to feel that contraction. Go all the way up slow. Go back down slow. Like, don't do that fast stuff. Nah, fuck that speeding up shit, bro. You're not trying to go quick, bro. Stop trying to be a mini man. Go slow with it, man. Take your time, man. Hey, hey, hey. Take your time with it. And if you don't know how to work out, you know, the other part of your arm, aka the biceps, well, guess what, bro? Take a fucking gallon of water and start curling it. I know you got access to at least one gallon of water, but don't get it twisted, man. Don't give me no excuse. And look, bro, worst comes to worst, you don't. Just fucking curl your vacuum cleaner or some shit, bro. Like, just curl something, my guy. And next up, you got to work out the legs, bro. Don't get it twisted, man. I know a lot of dudes out here skip leg day. I'm not going to lie, bro. I do be skipping it every now and then, but I'm really getting back on my shit. Don't get it fucked up, bro. I'm tired of getting these chicken legs. I'm tired of it. So look, I recommend doing squats. I know a lot of people say that shit, but look, do 100 squats right now, bro, in a row. Tell me that shit don't burn. Tell me that the next day you can be able to walk perfectly. Nah, bro. If you do 100 in a row, I'm telling you, that shit will burn like a motherfucker. That shit will look if you feel like you're in hell with some shit burning in the flames and stuff. Nah, bro, you gotta go all out. You gotta go all out. And if 100 in a row are too easy, do 150. I know a lot of people are gonna complain like, oh, I don't have weights. Body weight squats are too easy. Do 200 in a row. Matter of fact, do 200 jump squats in a row. I know damn well these jump squats are harder than regular squats. Don't get it fucked up, at least for me. Because I like to jump real high on my jump squats. I don't like to half-ass the jump squat. Nah, bro, go real high like you're about to dunk on a fucking 12-foot rim, man. Shout out to Dwight Howard. Don't get it twisty. But other than that, you could do some lunges too. Like, those are good for the legs. And, you know, you can't forget about the calves, right? So do some calf raises. I'm not going to lie. I've been slacking out the calf raises. But you just got to, you know, hit the calves, bro. Walk around your house on your tippy toes or some shit. Like, just work out the calves, bro. Please. I highly advise it. And last but not least, the last body part you got to work out on a daily basis is your core. You got to have that nice set of 10-pack abs just like the man himself, Aaron Yeager. And, you know, for me personally, the workout that I do on a daily basis is literally the Aaron Yeager ab workout right here. That's what I do. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to that dude who made that video. I don't know who he is, but much love to him, I guess. Now, with all that being said, look, I already showed you guys the blueprint to all the workouts. I showed you guys what to eat. Next up, you got to drink at least a gallon of water a day. I'm talking to my men out here. Drink your fucking water. Stop slacking off, bro. Drink water. Look, get it, bro. Come on, bro. Your body's made up of 70% of water. How the fuck are you going to survive without water? Like, it's low-key impossible, bro. The majority of you guys who are tired of shit on a daily basis is because you're not drinking enough water. You're just dehydrated as fuck. So drink water, bro. It'll actually boost your energy. And it'll just make you feel better, like, overall, bro. Like, every fucking day type shit. You're like, I'm wide awake. I'm peaceful vibes over here. Don't get it too wasty. And another crucial thing that you must do to build muscle is sleep. You got to get your eight hours, bro. You know, if not, seven hours. You know, seven hours is cool. Six, mm, it's a little pushy net, but it's fine, though. It's fine. Five, nah, fuck that, bro. Don't get five hours of sleep at night, bro. Fuck that, bro. If you do that, you low-key, like, the muscles you were, were working out the other day, they're not going to be really, like, you know, they're still going to be fatigued the next day. Like, they're going to be tired and shit. Like, your muscles are going to be like, what the fuck you doing, bro? I didn't even sleep last night. Like, let me fucking sleep. Why are you going to work me out again? Uh. So make sure you're getting your sleep. Bro. I already made a video right here called The Importance of Sleep. Like, I literally talked about that shit. So if you get proper rest, you're going to be able to hit proper workouts later on, and basically, you'll be able to build muscle real fast. And last but not least, the ultimate secret to truly building lean muscle is to retain your seed. Don't, you know, don't release too much, but don't, you know, beat your meat and shit. Like, don't do that, bro. Don't, like, you know what I'm saying, have sex too much. Like, calm down, bro. Learn to actually, you know, cultivate your sexual energy. Make it rise up to all the parts of your muscle, bro. Because your seed has a lot of protein in it. Don't get it twisted. It got a lot of vitamins, nutrients, all types of stuff. Why do you think some fighters actually retain their seed, you know, one month or two before the match? Because they're preparing. They know they got to go all out on that day. So why not hold in your energy? Because if you guys do not already know, sexual energy is literally the most potent energy on this planet. Like, it is the strongest. Like, why do you think when you're horny and shit, you low-key just want to do anything it takes just to release, just to bust a nut real quick. You do whatever it takes. 
You know what I'm saying? You lie to your parents real quick, say, oh, I'm doing something else, like, and then you go to the corner room and beat your meat. Or you maybe you, I don't know, you don't want to hook up with a female or some shit. Like, you would do whatever it takes, bro. You would literally buy this girl some lunch, you would buy her a movie ticket just to watch a movie with her in hopes that you would smash her or some shit later. Like, come on, bro. Your seed could fucking create a whole child, bro. It can create you. You were made from a fucking seed. Like, it's crazy, bro. I already made a bunch of videos on it anyways. But I'm just telling you guys, if you retain your seed, you know what I'm saying, your muscle definition will start to pop out more. Ever since I started retaining, my abs started showing more. And I started, like, you know, actually looking bigger, believe it or not, bro. I don't know. You guys could tell for the thumbnail and shit. But, yeah, bro. Keep retaining and keep building that muscle. Because I'm telling you, bro, over time, oh, yeah, you're going to see big results. Don't get it twisted. But with all that being said, just make sure to remember to eat more calories. Make sure you're high in that protein. Work out consistently. Rest well, a.k.a. sleep good. Drink a shit ton of water, and last but not least, retain your seed. And this right here is basically the Krabby Patty secret formula. Don't get it twisted. But yeah, man, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was real long and shit, but a lot of people asked for this video, so, you know, I had to make it real quick. I had to, bro. So with all that being said, man, I hope you guys stay blessed, stay healthy, and stay wealthy, because it's your boy, Ice Cold JT, signing out.